yeah, that was definitely a, a, a hype moment. I, I surprised myself a little bit, too, on that, like just with ball placement. Baker was going crazy at this point, too. He was like, I can't believe you. You are crazy. You are crazy. I think there's a mic'd up of him saying it. Like, you're crazy. Oh, my God. What the f is wrong with him? Hey, what the f is wrong with you? I was like, I don't know. I'm just trying to make plays, bro. What's up, guys? This is Jarvis Juice Landry, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for all the support. Thank you guys for all the love. Please like and subscribe. Keep commenting below. Today, we got a top 15 plays that somebody has put together, and I'm gonna watch and see if they're right or not. Let's do it. Stuck up in the same place. I don't know if I'm losing it or I'm trying to save face. I no longer find love in the ones that I swear I love. So this looks like the Jets game, my first year in Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland. The old Cleveland, Cleveland special. This is where it all started. The 680 connection. Also like my first pass, that's like my first pass of like my career in Cleveland. Carolina game. Yeah, wild. This play crazy because the play is, is is nice, but like the celebration, I celebrated three times on this damn play. I was so excited. I did a Michael Blackson, Blackman, Blackman. We did a campfire and I jumped in the dog pound. Shit. Three celebrations in one. Nah, but this is hype. Oh, I remember this. Second season in Miami. Hadn't had much punt return experience. Fourth quarter. Yeah. The young juice. The 14. The Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo. This was one that was like this probably was like the game, like for me, was like this year of like being a special teams player. I think I made the Pro Bowl this year too. Like being a special teams player was like, like I took some more pride in that shit. Making guys miss, and they say I'm not a fast guy. Not too many people catch me. That's all I say. The fall asleep fade right here. Yeah. Yeah. Play with him. Fall asleep, fade. <laughs> Fall asleep. Got him. Yes, sir. <sighs> uh, I was trying to go. Damn. So I, 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 I feel some type of way because I got. I got joked on a whole year about like a linebacker catching me, but to my defense, he was already running when I broke free and I had to make two guys miss in open field. So, and he's kind of fast, so I mean, he did what he had to do. He did what he had to do. I wish he would have caught me though. That definitely would have been like top five all time uh, highlights. This is definitely like top five. I threw this ball and, hold on. I threw this ball and I promise you, my lat on my left arm was hurting for two weeks. I hadn't threw this, like, it never worked out like this in practice where I had to put the ball on the line. It was always just like, you know, he was right there. I could just soft toss it to him or put a lot of air on it. And this one was more like, he's literally at the sideline, defender closing, and I had to activate my Baker Mayfield and put it on the line in Texas Stadium. That's definitely top five plays right there for me. That play right there, the energy crazy, and I got a chance to throw it to my brother. So that's definitely top five play for me. 
And I was just hoping it got there when I threw it. I was like bouncing, like, please, please, get there, get there, get there. Ugh. Yes, sir. I don't know. That was, that was wild. That was wild. He got to throw me one this year, too. Go back, going back to Miami. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember this. This was a clutch game for me because um, I think I got the ball like five times in a row, this drive. And I was tired as hell. And I couldn't believe my, I, myself that I jumped over somebody. I've always wanted to. Always wanted to. Le'Veon Bell was jumping over guys this year crazy. I had to get somebody. <laughs> yeah, and then the next play came back to me. Running a little go ball. Finish, finish. Set up the touchdown. We lit. 28 28. We ended up winning that game. We came from behind and won that game. That was one of my best games out, out in uh, Miami for sure. Just like the energy, the crowd, the environment, everything was just like, I don't know. I think we kind of like turning the corner a little bit. I think that was the year also that we went to the playoffs for the first time in a while, a long time, so that was why. Baltimore, another game that was a... Ah, uh, stumble, stumble! I could not catch my balance! And I was tired as hell. <laughs> Because I could not catch my balance. Like my, my, my legs was not working. I don't I had no idea. They even trying to they trying to help me up, pick me up. It's like every time somebody tried to help me, I fell a little bit more. So grab me by my damn neck. You tack me by my damn neck. Golly. Yeah, so like this year in Miami too, like um like they were just trying to get the ball in my hands any kind of way. And um the Statue of Liberty. Run the Statue of Liberty. Hard body, just wanted more. Demo me. Ronaldo! I gotta bring that celebration back. I think it's time to bring the Ronaldo back into, into the American football side of things. I, I definitely think it's time for that celebration to be brought back. That's definitely one of a fan favorite, I think. Um, the Ronaldo celebration that I have to bring back. Wild year. At that point too, while pushing the sideline, I already knew that it was like, I'm not running out of bounds. The end zone right here, three defenders. Like, what's it gonna be? And I just decided to just put my shoulder down try to keep my balance, run as hard as possible, and try to get in there. Ended up breaking two, three tackles and getting in. Crazy. That's definitely one of the top five too. That's probably like number four, number five on my list of like top five plays that I've had in my career. Give me that. I wanted more. I wanted more, little boy. <laughs> Oh man, just want, I just wanted it more. I wish I'd have scored though. The the touchdown would have made it that much better. Um, but I mean, hell of a catch, hell of a throw by Baker. Mm. I wish I would have scored that one. I'm not gonna lie. That's one play that I wish I'd have scored. Like just caught it, held on to it, and as I was falling, just like reach, try to stretch back, and like hopefully it would have crossed the line. All right, first of all, so let me break this play down. So this play was designed as a double reverse and throw to the running back. And all we can practice, I think Duke Johnson is the running back here, all we can practice, you know, the running back was open, the running back was open, but I knew that it took a long time for that play to develop. And I was like, man, I could just see like somebody sniffing it out at some point. And so I told Brashard Perriman, uh, number 19, so he went in motion first, and Baker actually faked the first handoff to him. I told him in practice, like, bro, just keep running. Um, and it wasn't even designed to go to him. 
the play was not even designed to go to him. And I saw that nobody really took the, the fake or everybody kind of eyes was to the side that I was running to that they could see Duke. And I figured that their backs would be turned to Brashard. Um, so once I saw that the safety was running toward Duke, I just turned back to Brashard and threw it as far and as hard as I can. Um, this definitely, I'm, I was surprised the, with the crow hop, the nasty crow hop, the center field, got to get it to home plate, crow hop. Um, and it made it there. Probably's my, probably's, ah, that one in the Dallas clip were probably like one of my two best throws of my career. Um, but yeah, that was definitely a, a, a hype moment. I, I surprised myself a little bit too on that. Like just with ball placement, Baker was going crazy at this point too. He was like, I can't believe you. You are crazy. You are crazy. I think there's a mic'd up of him saying that. Like, you crazy. Oh my God. What the f is wrong with him? Oh my God. Oh my God. How did that work? Hey, what the f is wrong with you? You crazy. What's wrong with you? I was like, I don't know. I'm just trying to make plays, bro. <laughs> Here we go. Third and 14 out in Pittsburgh. No idea that I no idea that I was in. I knew that I caught it, but I had no idea if I was gonna be in or not. But I believe that I was in. And most times when you believe that you're in in the, in the NFL, the referee might give it to you. Or they might show it again on a on a on a jumbotron. So I was just trying to sell it, let them know that I believed that I was in, but I definitely caught it. Um, and and we actually reviewed it, and we got this call third and fourteen. We ended up getting the first down here um, and scoring on that same drive. So that was pretty dope. Yeah, we were getting blown out this game against Houston, um, just on the boundary. I actually was dropping this ball. If you really look closely, I was dropping this ball. And when he put his shoulder down to hit me, he actually hit the ball back into me. And when I felt the ball like on my body, I just like hugged myself. And shit, ended up catching it. But I still got up like I did that on purpose. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's all about making them believe you're gonna catch it anyway. Yeah, it's hard to do a top 10 for me because when I make plays like this, it's like, I expect to make these plays. So, like, I'm, I never get the wow factor out of myself when I make these plays. It's just like a common, like, I, don't, I don't know, like, um, I don't know how I can rate these exactly. I just always feel like there's no play on the field that I can't make, so. When I do make plays, I never get the same type of emotion um, on most plays that, as a fan or as somebody that would put like a top 10 or 15 plays together for me, um, you know, but it is a hell of a play. It is a hell of a play. Baker trusting me, just putting it where he can't see me. He can't see the ball, so, you know, by him just throwing the ball right there, obviously, just a hell of a throw. And me just trying to make a play, no matter what. Uh, it's a great catch, though. Ooh, look at my man on the sideline right here. My man 55, like, is that number 55? My man 45, he like, God, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, definitely, this play, definitely. Definitely early in my career in Miami, probably I have to say is number one or number two play of my career for sure. Um, just really wanting it, just really wanting it. Really feeling like, you know, at this point, man, I'm not running out of bounds. Every time I get the ball in my hands, I'm trying to score, which should always be somebody's mindset. When you, when you got the ball in your hands, you're trying to score. Um, I didn't know if I stepped out or not, but they didn't blow the whistle. So I was just trying to make things happen. 
Um, and I had a damn great convo of blockers that came. Everybody was big linemen running on the field, blocking down the field, you know, as I'm cutting back. A little barricade, they created a little barricade for me. Um, but just running a sail route, not wanting to go out of bounds, wanting it more, making a move, getting back cross field, seeing my blockers right here, they understand I gotta get behind them, then try to punch the gas a little bit. Um, and then right there, once I, once you get inside the 10, inside the five, man, it's about, man, I didn't ran this damn far, I'm scoring. I got it. I have to score. There's no way I can't score right here. So like, that's always my mindset. Inside the 10, inside the five, I'm going, I ain't no running out of bounds. I'm trying to get to the end zone, period, period. I was hyped. I, coach got mad. I took my helmet off. You know, when I, when I make a, when I make a crazy, crazy play like, like this one, for instance, and I take my helmet off before I get to the sideline, I'm hyped about the play. I'm not going to lie. I know I said that I don't get surprised about plays that I make or whatever it is. And I wasn't surprised. It was just like, that, my, that's my passion. Like, like, I want you to see my face. I want you to see the, because I mean it. And I'm built like that. <laughs> no, but that was, a, and that was a wild year. We had a couple coaching changes and, and stuff like that. But it was fun. It was fun. Uh, this play, of course, the one-handed catch. Just making a play, I think a second, third down, just making a play, giving me an opportunity into the boundary, which we never really try to run these big box fades into the boundary, obviously, because there's not a lot of space. Um, but he giving me an opportunity to make a play, and hell, shit, you know, just making a catch. A catch that people would probably say is like, one of the top five players in my career or greatest catches I ever made or whatever it is. But, you know, I've made catches even crazier than that in college. Um, there's probably two of them that I've made in college that's one-handed that's just crazy that nobody talks about, but they'll talk about this one. And, you know, this is like, that was like basic. Here's the long setback. Mettenberger for Landry. Did he catch it? Hands of Velcro, touch for safe over the top of Otha Peters. Watch the right hand go up. Look at this catch. Oh. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know which play was your favorite play. And we'll be back soon with more content. Thank you guys for all the love. Can't wait to see you guys this season. Peace.